Good morning, sweetheart. It's time for the Ronnie Record Show, you know. I know, I know. So what are you going to educate us on today? <laughs> I'm not the professor. I just pretend I am. But today we're going to talk about some uh, songwriters out of the Brill Building. This is a great book on the Brill Building, all the songwriters in there. They were amazing group of songwriters that were there late 50s, early 60s. They pumped out thousands mm -hmm. of pop songs. Mm -hmm. And they also became backups for star or musicians that we know today. Not They're not active, but I mean, they were the backup singers, right? Do I have the right girl? No. Building? I don't no? think, well, I could, maybe some was of them Was Campbell? Did. Not Campbell, but who was another one that became a big name? No, you're thinking about the Wrecking Crew. Sorry. Oh, not the right one. <laughs> no, I thought, what are you... Uh, okay, sorry, no. disregard that. He's the professor, not me. Anyway, I was thinking about them because Neil Sedaka has a show on... Uh, 50s radio on series radio and he was one of the writers uh, he and Harold uh, Greenfield were uh, they wrote together and uh, he did uh, again hundreds of songs I don't maybe more than that mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. in his lifetime mm -hmm. so uh, so he the first song I'm going to play is his he also sang most of his songs. Right. Not not the other uh, uh, writers did so much, but he wrote this song and sang it, and it's about his he had a crush on a girl in high school, mm -hmm. and she happened to be Carol King, another one of the great writers mm -hmm. out of the Brill Building. Right. So this is where where it start to play, but where is the Brill Building located? It's in New York. In fact, okay. Neil right. was talking about how no. uh, on the radio how there was a New York sound that came out of the Brill Building, and like there was a Chicago sound and an LA sound. Right, right. And, but I think the New York they were just more prolific with all these songwriters and just amazing uh, group power. But anyway. He, I think he had a crush on Carol King, who was okay. one of the writers. So this was his song, Oh Carol. Okay. Yeah. Once you hear his voice, you know what kind of, what, what era he came out of. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And Neil Sedaka is very good and has been around for a very long time. Very long. Like very I long, said, long time. he must be 85 or something and, like that. Yeah. And he's still, like I said, on this radio show. He's fun to listen to because he knows all the background stories. Right. I haven't listened to him yet. I haven't seen it on my car radio. You should. It's there the you. 50s okay. station. Okay. There, uh, were, there were many groups that came out. It was like Gary Coffin and Carol King were considered a group. Yeah. And then Barry Mann and Symphony Wheel. They were another group that came out. Right. Well, they were the... They were the I think one focus on the lyrics and one focus right. on the two. Right, and another one was Jeff Berry and Ellie uh, Greenwich and Doc Thomas and Mort Schumann. Right. They are all very, very uh, associated with the Brill Building. And there are so many more. Um, I mean, it's kind of like the Wrecking Crew, you know, you can talk about them all day long. Oh, yeah. So they so tell us more. This is old Carol. I love records though, they talk in the middle. I'm but a fool. I'm but a fool. <laughs> Darling, I love you. Oh, the other thing that, that uh, Neil talked you. about was, and I love this term, and you know I do, is he said, what we did with these songs that made them so popular, we manufactured hooks. And you were talking about that, I think, just the other day yeah. on your short. Right. right. Just uh, you know, hooks in the song. He said they were simple times, innocent times, and we just love these simple melodies that he called them sing along. Mm -hmm. And that's and, what I do on the radio right. when I hear these songs. And I like a song that you can sing along. Right. And um, yeah, just driving out here, blowing in the wind, that kind of sort of stuff. So who else do you have here? So uh, now that we're going to do Carol King, the okay. girl he's talking about in right. this song, and, and um, Jerry Goffin. Okay. And anyway, Carol King put out uh, just a million dollar seller, uh, her own uh, album called Tapestry. Yeah. So she had a lot the, of It's a good album. Too. It's oh, beautiful. The one album. that I have, unfortunately, the CD 
is live and it's hard for me to hear the actual song when it's live and you have all the clapping and all the other stuff behind. But it was tapestry and you bought I, it for I, me. I, I've got the uh, seven, uh, the 45s. And, <laughs> so we'll play them that way for you. Yeah, no more live Anyway, ones. she wrote this song and it's an Everly Brothers song, Crying in the Rain. Big song. Mm -hmm. Big song. Big song for the Everly Brothers okay. and for her. Crying Pretty song. In the rain. That beautiful yes. harmony that the Everly Brothers had. Did you know that um, Carol King yeah. was a songwriter, and when she and she was only 16 years old when right. she started. Well, she Neil Sedaka was, was a, a very young man, also. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, they are. And I think uh, she married uh, Jerry Goffin, I think, for a while. <laughs> and they were paid by song. Um, so they were cranking out songs oh, they all, day out. Long. all day long yeah. because every song that they did they got paid for. I don't know how much. I'm sure it wasn't very much back in the day. But oh, I don't know. They had a good living because they probably cranked out so many. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of good ones. So, Crying in the Rave by the Everly Bug. Yeah. Big hit for them and a big hit for Carol and Jerry. So the next one, you mentioned Doc Pumas mm -hmm. and uh, Mort Schumann. They wrote a lot. Of, they wrote a lot of songs for Elvis. I think I, Suspicion. I pulled that up. Did you? Yes. Yes. I think Suspicion was one of them. Uh, great songwriters. This is a, a teenager in love by who else but Dion and the Belmonts, and we know them. And that, I love this song. Because I always felt like it was a teenager in love. I still think I'm a teenager in love. Well, that you do. <laughs> Jerry Lieber and Mike Stroller. They were big, you know, they big time. wrote a million songs for the and they coasters. Were, they were associated with Elvis Presley also. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they wrote Hum Dog, but that Big Mountain Thornton did first. Yeah. And then Elvis did. <coughs> it was on that <coughs> talk show. I know you got a little coffee. I morning. do. I do have a little coffee this morning. Right. Anyway, Teenager Love is just one of my favorite songs. I've always loved Dion and the Belmonts, as you know. And Dion, when he went solo. Right. This is one of their early hits, the Teenager Love. Teenager Love. I think every teenager back in the day yeah. loved that song. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yes. So our last one is another Rain song. Okay. Well, this is Barry Mann, one of my favorites, too. Barry Mann and Cynthia Wheel. Barry Mann did one of my favorite songs of all time. He actually performed it, Who Put the Bop in the Bop Chabon. Okay. And he sang that song, and the significance of Who Bop Put the Bop in the Bop Chabon, he was actually one of the people who wrote a lot of the songs that put that bop, 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 bop you know, in the, yeah. a lot of doo-wop terminology. Mm -hmm. And I like doo-wop, yeah. which I have said many times before. Right. I do like So that. this is another rain song. Okay. Uh, and uh, so it's Walking in the Rain by the Ronettes and uh, Ronnie, Ron Spector. What's his name? Spector? I think mm -hmm. it's Ron Spector. No, that's The Wall line. of Music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wall of uh, Sound. The Wall of Sound. I got most of it. Anyway, he got his name on the label too, but it's primarily Barry Mann and uh, his partner doing Walk in the Rain. I always love this Wall of Sound. And here it is. So, yeah. This is Walking in the Rain by the right. Ronettes. Yeah. When it rains, a lot of times that's what it sounds like here. Rain hitting all the windows. I do have a question for you. Yeah. That Walking in the Rain, Barry and Cynthia wrote it. The Ronettes made Perform. it popular. And yeah. did they write it for them specifically, or did they just pick up that song? No, I think they write the song. I, You know, Maybe they wrote for people specifically, but Phil Spector, right. I finally got his name right. Spector. Uh, the, you know, he is, I think he was married to Ronnie at the time. Of the Ronettes? Of uh, the Ronettes. Uh -huh. yeah. But uh, I think that uh, because he was part of it, he was in New York at the time, inspiring some people, or he being inspired, I don't know. So he, they might have written it for him and his group, the Ronettes. Okay. Oh, cool. 
But I love this small song. Let me just turn up a little bit. Again, Phil Spector always had the 20 guitars, right. 30 violins, just to build up that sap background. Yeah, the whole wall. Yeah, the wall was shut up. Yep. Yeah, was, uh, and the Beatles even uh, yes, seek the Beatles back to get that right. sound too. So, did the Beatles ever play at the Brill Building? Did they ever go the in there and practice Beatles, or cut a record or anything? No, there, there was nothing there. Just there was actually like partition offices, a hundred of them, with these two people in it banging on a piano, coming up with the song. So they were wow. they were like an assembly line of music. Right. And somebody was recording them. So like every room must have had their own recording, or is it one recording and say, okay, room number two, this no. is them. No, no, oh. they, were, they didn't have that technology then. Okay. They just wrote songs. But okay. it's like if you and I got a piano here and you played the piano and I wrote lyrics, that would be it. And then they would write it down and they then go play for somebody else. I guess. I guess other people. Uh, okay. I mean, they were famous, so people, I think, maybe sought them out to write songs for them. Right. Right. Nice. But I just say uh, that sound, and just listening to Neil Sedaka the other day in the radio, just I just wanted to play some of at least four songs out of thousands yeah. that came out of that building. And so it was a great era, it was great pop music, probably the best of all pop music so kinds. If the building is still in New York, do they still use it? Oh, I do think so. Still rent rooms no, I to... think it's somebody, something okay. else now, I don't okay. know. Okay, all right. But, uh, you know, it was just, uh, you said real building and people thought oh, of yeah. music. Yeah, you know. exactly. Okay. So I just want to say, I, I just, I got inspired to, uh, talk about uh, music today <coughs> from the Brill Building. So It's good music. <coughs> so, you know, you'll look, look at your label on your record from that era and in pop music, you'll probably see one of these names from the Bill, Brill Building Yeah. right there and uh, just awesome. So anyway, thank you for thank you. watching. This is the Roddy Record Show signing yes. off. Thank you very much for joining us today. We always love it when people make comments about our show good yeah. bad or whatever good, but bad or ugly you feel like making a comment or you know that'd be great and Thank watch you. my shorts i put one out every day yes, i'm not talking does. about these shorts i've got about what's my youtube shorts. youtube shorts YouTube short. every day he comes every up with day, a new i've got another one that comes process. out so yeah. all right all right, thank you very much for joining us today. Bye bye. See you guys later. I'm still that teenager in love with you. Yes, you are. You are. You are very much still a teenager.